So we are joined by the awesome Andre Sills. <laughs> <laughs> and he's playing today the character of... Commander Osambenga. Wow, that's a huge role. We just saw a little glimpse of the play and, you know, your stealth performance <laughs> there. It was awesome. If you could just give us a little bit of um, your role. Um, the character uh, Osambenga, he's the country's governments, the, con the government's um, commander, army commander, and uh, he's kind of, ch he's not kind, he's chasing after um, the rebel militia leader, uh, General Kasembe, and it's an interesting dynamic with the two different sort of army leaders. Uh, Osam Benger's the type of guy who just kind of comes into a place and immediately owns it, and um, it's interesting trying to negotiate what's happening on stage with, when he's on stage with right. the other women who, in Mamanati's, this is their place, but as soon as I come in, it's my place, and that's okay. sort of negotiation between, between the two of us, so. It's pretty interesting. <laughs> it can get a little dark sometimes, but, you know. So how did you prepare for your role? Um, this one was a, an interesting one to prepare for because uh, some of the things that he orders aren't necessarily the nicest things. Yeah. Um, but something that I think helped me put put myself into context was watching this video that came out of the con that came out of the Congo, and it had a lot to do with like uh, rape and women who were in fact ruined mm -hmm. and uh, they talked to this to this soldier and um, he was just talking very plainly but what he was saying was that uh, you know if a woman gives me a problem we go and rape them and it was just as plain and simple as let's go to the store and get a, a jug of milk Wow, so it was an everyday situation for him. He had no shame about it. No shame. It was just like, it was just another day of at, at the office, basically. And just to kind of see how plain and simple and how terrifying it can be just to be like, yeah, I'm just going to go to school, go to the store and grab some milk and actually be saying, I'm going to go and rape somebody today mm -hmm. was not really myself. It didn't, I didn't understand it, but it was a good sort of, um, look into the world that we were we were getting ourselves into well you really bring a lot of emotion to the character and you bring it to life very well and you know you've got that great energy on stage how have you what other um plays have you been in? um well this is my first year back in toronto but before that i spent four consecutive seasons at the stratford shakespeare festival okay. and uh since being back i came back to Toronto in December to be a part of a show called The Overwhelming, which was actually around the corner from the Congo in Rwanda. And then, I guess about September time, I was playing Richard III, and uh, it's been nice to get back into Africa. Oh, really strong <laughs> characters there. Yeah, yeah. Well, in your character, what do you hope um, the strongest message is that's carried across? That's a good question. I guess... I, I hope to help facilitate through the women that are in the show that uh, what kind of a situation we, is going on in the Congo and how these women are being treated basically like they're just flesh or meat and not right. actually people. And to let the audience know as well that this is pretty modern day. It's not, you know, yeah, set something. back in the 60s or 70s. It's yeah. 2000s. 2000s, yeah. Yeah, so it's all very fresh and new and yeah. We kind of just, we live in our society and some of us, I guess, may put in the back of our head that these things are going on, but I'm really glad that you guys are bringing this play Ruin to life here in Toronto to shed some light on the current situations that are happening in Congo right. and, you know, to let our viewers as well know that there are such strong things going on in the world. And Yeah, it's very true. There's like, we, we live a very sheltered life and every once in a while there's a little glimpse of something that might be happening. Right. But at the end of the day, 
we can still go back to our sheltered life, sheltered lives, whereas they can't. they can't. You know, they might be going for a regular day of work, and all of a sudden, the door might blow in, and their place of work is gone, or somebody just takes them. Well, that's why I guess it's so important that the message of ruined actually gets across. You know, these women that are being ruined are coming out and, and becoming survivors of such a harsh environment and you know the men portrayed in in, in this play are real and, and this is what's happening so it's great I'm really happy to have you all here and, and showing our viewers what's going on thank you so much oh thank you thank you is there anything else you'd like to add um uh, no I guess that's about it <laughs> oh, great thank you again for doing the interview with yush.ca thank you Good day, y'all. It's your girl, Sharon. We are downtown at the Berkeley Street Theater for the play Ruined, and we are joined by the lovely lead actress, Marcy. Marcy T. House, one of the lead actresses. <laughs> <laughs> and she is playing Josephine in the play Ruined today. Would you like to tell us a little bit about your role? Uh, my role, I am one of the ladies in the brothel. The entire play takes place at Mama Nadi's, which is a bar slash brothel, and I'm kind of uh, Mama Nadi's um, head girl. And okay. so when the new girls come in, it's my job to let them know how things run in at Mama Nadi's. All right. And what era did this play take place in? Uh, this is recent. Uh, Lynn Nottage wrote this play just a few years ago. It premiered in Chicago at the Goodman in 2009. So it was set in the early 2000s. So it's a recent, it's a modern day play. Awesome. So um, what is the whole, in terms of, I know it's set at a brothel, mm -hmm. but um, what do you hope to get across in the play? Well, it, I, I really hope that it brings to light a lot of the issues that are going on in the Democratic Republic of Congo. Mm -hmm. um, at, at the, around the time when this play was set, uh, there was approximately 1,600 women being raped a week oh in the Democratic goodness. Republic of Congo, and that's what this play touches on. It's not about the um, victims, but the survivors. Uh, my character uh, is a rape survivor. All the uh, most of the women in the play are, are rape survivors, and so it's really about. Um, uh, bringing some light on that it, situation and and letting people know that you know a, a lot of the things that we hear in the West, uh, conflict uh, minerals, conflict diamonds, uh, uh, the the things uh, minerals and such that are in our cell phones, mm -hmm. are a lot of the issues that uh, help that actually contribute to what's going on over there, and so it's it's a I think it's one of the most important plays written in. A very long time. For sure, and we're glad that it's coming about, you know, especially in Toronto mm -hmm. and so close to Black History Month that we bring it, uh, all of these issues across to our Torontonians. Mm -hmm. And in terms of um, the place, it took place in Congo, mm -hmm. and we're bringing it to light. Who wrote the play? Uh, Lynn Nottage, who is an amazing playwright, one of my favorites, and this is not her first play. Uh, she's uh, written quite a few, Fabulation, Intimate Apparel, and uh, this is just her latest. And uh, I, I appreciate her as a playwright, because uh, as a black actress, it's nice to know that someone is out there writing uh, lead roles for black women that are three-dimensional and flawed and loving and, and all of those characters that oftentimes we don't get a chance to play. We're oftentimes uh, a minor character or a character uh, uh, that is uh, not very realistic or not very rooted in much. And so it's very, every time I pick up one of her plays, I'm, I'm excited because I know there's something juicy in it for me. <laughs> now I know you've done a lot of work. Where else have we seen you? Uh, well, I like to, I do a little bit of everything. I don't consider myself a stage actress, a film actress, a television actress. I consider myself an actress, uh, and I think that any good actress is able to work in any realm. Uh, I'm originally from Chicago, but I've been living in Vancouver uh, okay. for the past uh, 
almost six years, five and a half years, and so this is my first time in Toronto. You're and uh, thank you. I'm, I'm very, very happy to be here. And uh, so I've. Uh, I've done everything from Smallville, Fringe, uh, uh, I just closed Hamlet in Vancouver and before that I was doing Streetcar Named Desire in Victoria and uh, yeah. <laughs> wow, that is a great realm so you yeah. know that you definitely are a multitasker, can take on any role, that's great. Well thank you for sitting down with us at Yish TV today and letting our viewers know where else we can uh, catch you if we need to and the f this play runs from? Uh, we had our uh, first uh, dress rehearsal, uh, pay what you can, which was the 16th, and we run into February 12th. So please come out. You know, don't come out because I'm in it. Come out because it's an amazing play, an important play, and I guarantee you will not be disappointed. Well, thank you very much, Marcy. Thank you. All the best. All right, bye -bye. <laughs>